I tried out Hailey Bieber's lip treatment and I have some thoughts. Well, hey guys, today is August 1st. On this channel, I love doing a monthly favorites and fails video on the first of the month. Truthfully, this past month, I've tried out several products. They've all been great, good, okay. Nothing I felt compelled though to hop on here and rave or rage for or against. Instead, I'm gonna do a deep dive comparison between two peptide lip treatments. If you aren't familiar, Hailey Bieber is a celebrity. She has a skincare line called Road. And those of you who have been in the skincare game for a while, we all know when it comes to these celebrity skincare lines, all hype and then whoosh, you never hear about it again. But let's get into the lip peptide treatment. Peptides are widely available in skincare products. Moisturizers, serums, sunscreens, lip treatments, eye treatments, neck treatments, butt treatments, you name it, they're gonna put a peptide in there. By and large, they act to improve the water content of the top layers of the skin, similar to humectants like good old fashioned inexpensive glycerin or hyaluronic acid. But there is some studies and some push in the industry to suggest that they may have more biologic functions in the skin. Maybe they get in, they influence certain pathways that facilitate healing and recovery. And those are desirable when we're talking about a lip treatment, a product that you would put on your lips because lips are some really vulnerable territory to environmental stressors. They see a lot of stuff and truthfully, they don't have a whole lot going for them in the realm of protective products. Properties. There are very few melanocytes, the cells that make pigment in the lips. There's not much in the way of protective stratum corneum there. Lips are very prone to water loss. And as we talk, we eat, stuff gets on our lips very easily that can be irritating and make them prone to dryness. What exactly is the peptide in this? Palmitoyl tripeptide one. It is a type one collagen fragment. This type of peptide is kind of referred to as a matrikine. Matrikine peptides, their structure is sort of inspired inspired by naturally occurring peptides in our skin. They originate from fragmentation of extracellular matrix. Of course, they're synthetically derived. They're, they're made in a lab. It's not as though someone's going in and taking human skin and digesting it into these little peptide fragments and then make their way into a skincare. That would be wildly inefficient. The idea with palmitoyl oil tripeptide one is that it's a collagen fragment. And when your skin is exposed to environmental stressors, namely UV from from the sun, that the UVA rays from the sun, they come into the skin, they penetrate very deeply, they activate the um, activity of certain enzymes that destroy the collagen in our skin called matrix metalloproteinases, and the collagen gets chewed up and collagen fragments can then stimulate pathways to say, hey, come in and repair and heal this. This particular peptide is hoping to kick off those pathways by being shaped like the breakdown products of collagen. Now, whether or not the peptide actually gets into your skin and makes its way to the deeper layers of the skin to initiate said pathway, we're largely reliant on the industry studies, which you have to take with a large pinch of salt Fibroblasts are the cells that make collagen. Take some fibroblasts, put them in a dish, sprinkle on a little of this peptide. Allegedly, you can get them to start making collagen. Skin is a lot more complex than that. It's not just a sheet of cells in a dish. They have done some clinical tests with this peptide on human volunteers, like actual real people, 23 women to be precise, using the peptide at four parts per million. Woohoo, as if we know the concentration of this peptide in any skincare product being sold to us. Anyway, I digress. Four parts per million did in fact demonstrate an improvement in skin thickness. The improvement was small, but statistically significant. An improvement of 4% in skin thickness. Statistically significant does not necessarily correlate to clinically meaningful. So whether or not this peptide is actually going to increase the thickness of anyone's skin, uh, we, we really need better studies. When it comes to this particular peptide, you'll notice in a lot of my reviews, it's usually paired with palmitoyl tetrapeptide 7. Together, they are matrixyl 3000. That's a trademark peptide pairing of matrikines that may have collagen stimulatory properties. But the road peptide lip treatment, I'm kind of surprised they didn't just do matrixyl 3000. Like, why did they just go with one of the two peptides? It's not as though you must have the other one in there. They can sprinkle in whatever the heck they want. Doesn't necessarily mean a product is more effective if it has both peptides versus just one. I was just kind of surprised because, you know, if you're storing line around a lip product is that it has peptides. I don't 
don't know, you'd think that they would put more than one, but they didn't, they just put the one in there. This also has tetrahexyl decyl ascorbate. That is a stable form of vitamin C. Uh, now, when people hear vitamin C, they think, oh, that's gonna improve wrinkles because it can, with long-term use, it can improve collagen. Yeah, ascorbic acid may do that, depending on the formulation. Tetrahexyl decyl ascorbate is less well studied in terms of showing some of these properties, but it is an antioxidant. So it may help your lips in battling oxidative stress from all of the environmental stressors. This particular lip treatment, like many others on the market, has a variety of plant-derived butters. It has shea butter. Y'all know I love that. Great for reducing water loss out of the lips. It also has babusa nut seed oil, a lightweight emollient that may help deliver antioxidants to the skin, theoretically. Theobroma grandia florum seed butter. Like shea butter, that's gonna help reduce water loss from the skin. The consistency of this product kind of threw me off a bit. It's very sticky. It feels, looks like a lip gloss. The product does stay on the lips pretty well through drinking. Y'all know I'm always sipping on drinks. This stays on the lips pretty well. It's like a lip gloss. When you go into their website, they show this before and after, trying to make the point that this product reduces lip lines. Really what it does is it's a, it's a thick, glossy coat on the lips. So of course that's going to make fine lines on the lips look less noticeable. But it's not as though there's any proof that the product actually changes the skin structure to smooth and, and flat and wrinkles. It's really just light scattering. This product I have used a lot, like giving it a good go daily for a couple of weeks and then intermittently to remind myself of the experience. Overall, I have to say this looks and performs like a lip gloss. It does not really lead to long lasting improved hydration in the lips. For example, if I use it at night, the following morning when I wake up, I don't know, my lips are not necessarily feeling super moisturized, but if I wear it during the day, it's kind of like I just put on a lip gloss. The marketing around this brand is all about looking like a glazed donut. The modus operandi of a lot of skincare brands these days is to come out with an inanimate object and try and tell people that they need to look like that object and make a whole skincare line around it. Let me know in the comments, if you are a skincare formulator, what inanimate object would you try and get people to believe they needed to look like. So is this a bad product? No. I have to say though, it doesn't perform like a skincare product. It performs more like a cosmetic. And yes, skincare products are under the umbrella category of cosmetics, but I think you guys understand what I'm talking about. Like when we are using skincare products, it's to support some outcome for skin health, whether it be improvement in moisture retention, whether it be minimizing redness, irritation, improving overall skin tone. And we expect when we use a product consistently that we're going to see some type of result. This product performs more like a cosmetic, like makeup, like a lip gloss, and that you put it on, it's very shiny. Yes, that shininess does in fact diminish the appearance of any little fine wrinkles on the lips. But as you go about you know, doing stuff, talking, and it rubs off, the lips are not left moisturized. Let's talk about a product though that in my experience has a similar storyline, but actually in my experience using it, does in fact deliver a true skincare benefit. And that is from good old Paula's Choice. Their hyaluronic acid plus peptides lip booster with squalane. I have been using this off and on for two years now. I've carried it around with me. I don't think I've ever really talked about it much. It's a good product. I've used it enough that I can attest to the fact that when I use this product, my lips are softer, they're moisturized. I have less of a tendency towards irritation. I mean, y'all know me. I'm always drinking and I'm always running my mouth. My lips, they need, they need moisturizer all the time. And this is a product where when I'm using it consistently, my lips stay moisturized in between. Like for example, I put it on at night, the following morning, the following day, I have moisturized lips. Like I can wake up the next morning and my lips are soft. They're moisturized after a full night of sleep. I can go ahead and put on my SPF lip balm or a lipstick, whatever. Whereas with the road lip treatment, if I use that at night, the following morning, it's as though I use nothing because it's, again, it performs more like a lip gloss. Like the road one, it's got palmitoyl tripeptide one. Paula's Choice snuck in another peptide for us, palmitoyl tripeptide 38. Now that's not the same as what is 
found in Matrixyl 3000. This is a newer peptide. It's a peptide that's naturally found within collagen 6 and within laminate. Those are proteins that are important for your skin. We'll just say for brevity's sake. The particular peptide manufacturer claims that this peptide is going to boost the production of six different proteins in your skin. The backing behind that claim comes from an in vitro study, meaning cells in a dish. And again, your skin, your lips, not a cell in a dish. Collagen 1, collagen 2, collagen 4, fibronectin, hyaluronic acid, you know, that's that's the bad boy that loves water, and laminin-5. Oh, the manufacturer took it to actual human skin and human volunteers. At 2% strength, this particular peptide, when used for two months in female volunteers, volunteers themselves reported a reduction in wrinkles varying anywhere from 31% to 100%. So that's not the most objective measurement, right? Just asking people, do you, do you think your lips look less wrinkled? This, similar to the Hailey Bieber lip treatment, we'll call it, has shea butter, cocoa seed butter, it has squalane. Now squalane I like. It's is a lot more lightweight in consistency as an oil, as an emollient. I do find that when I use moisturizers, skincare products with squalane, I really just like the look of the skin uh, related to squalane products. It really does a nice job softening and smoothing the skin. That's just a personal preference. Is it any better than babusa seed oil? No, but I just like the feel of products formulated with squalane. The Polish Choice Lip Booster also has hyaluronic acid, which uh, helps with moisture content as well. Yeah, this the Polish Choice Lip Booster it actually, it feels like a moisturizer formulated specifically for the needs of the lips. And when used consistently, it does impart sustained moisture. Both products are free of fragrance, free of flavorance. Although the Rode Skincare, you can get flavored versions of the lip treatment. Now, if you're new here, when it comes to lip balms, lip treatments, things that go on the lips, fragrance and flavorance are a common irritant. So when possible, I always prefer to choose a product that is free of those. And so that's why I went with the scented one. Now, obviously, if you couldn't figure it out already, I like the Polish Choice Lip Booster much better. Not to say the Rode one is bad, it just in my opinion, the way it performed for me, and I really did give it a good trial run, it's kind of just like a lip gloss. Polish Choice product really is offering some skin benefit in terms of just improving moisturization in a sustained fashion. And you couldn't go off of ingredient lists alone comparing the two products. It really took a good trial of both products to really see that truly the Polish Choice Lip Booster is superior in performance, in my opinion, and my experience using it. And getting back to the whole branding or around the road skincare about the glazed donut, the glossiness of the lip gloss, it's kind of like when you eat a donut and you have the, the grease on your lips, it's kind of like that. Uh, it's just glossy and shiny and greasy on there. That's sort of how the Rode product is. Whereas the Paula's Choice product, it's not, it's not changing collagen, I don't think, uh, but it is improving moisture retention. It is improving barrier function. In my experience, you know, it yields a sustained improvement in moisture. Ice. All right, y'all, let me know in the comments, have you tried anything from Rode? Uh, what has been your experience been? I have been trying out all of their products behind the scenes and truthfully some of them are decent like actually none of them are objectively bad let me know in the comments if you want to see a review of all of road skincare i'd be more than happy to do that for you i've held off because i know you guys are kind of like over the celebrity stuff but from time to time i do see comments please review road skincare so let me know if that's something you're still interested in i'd be happy to share my opinions on everything else from the brand but if you guys like this video give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.